It's Hot 97 Ebro in the morning. Laura Styles, Rosenberg. Give it up for our guy Alfred from Black Enterprise Magazine. Welcome, Round of applause. Alfred. Now we see, you see, we have an empty microphone here because we're waiting on two people yes. that we're going to highlight today. Alfred, um, who are the two people we're waiting for? Well, Kelly Pierre Lewis. I mean, excuse me, Carol, Kelly Pierre Lewis. Uh-huh. I always want to say Louis. <laughs> um, one of my colleagues who's our director of audience development at Black Enterprise, uh, but more importantly, she's kind of the brainchild behind this new campaign we have called BE Modern Man. Um, Black Enterprise Modern Man, can you kind of frame that for us? Because it's, it, I mean, obviously it seems simple, but there's something to it. Well, the, the idea is that when you look at men of color and black men in particular, in mainstream media, we pretty much fall into four categories. Athlete, entertainer, victim, or perpetrator. Right. Uh, but the truth is 95% of us don't fall into those categories or we're not limited to those categories. Wait one second. Have a seat. Yeah, yeah, Have a seat, yeah. young lady. Hi. We're just getting started. She She's here. Welcome. Yeah. How are you? Traffic's crazy for you outside a little Listen, bit? Mm. It was I love your hair, by the way. Thank you very much. How you Plus, she has to fight past all the fans, you know. Listen, yeah. You popping out here? You it's, popping? It's, it's not easy being Kelly. It's just not. Hi, Kelly. Yeah. I'm Laura. Kelly, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Uh, Kelly, we were just getting into Black Enterprise mm-hmm. Modern Man, which is your brainchild. Yes. Yep. Um, and he was breaking down the four cat- the perceptual four categories around yeah, Black Well, uh, Kelly can, can definitely um, take that part over. But the goal was really to, to, to reclaim the dialogue um, and allow black men to speak for themselves, to define themselves, and present the vast majority of black men who are not getting any attention in mm. the image, um, in, in the media, in mainstream media, and who are doing a wide variety of amazing things across all industries. Um, and this is the majority of men, black men, but they're not the, the ones that are showcased. Right. I was just gonna say that a lot of times we, we spend a lot of time allowing ourselves to be, um, pigeonholed by media and expecting media to care about us and how we look. And really, at the end of the day, we need to care about us and we need to care about how we look and not be concerned with CNN or Fox News or the rest of these cats and really focus on ourselves sometimes. Well, that was exactly Kelly's point when she came up with this. You can go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, it's really about opening up the spectrum in which men of color and that we're talked about all together. Um, you know, it would definitely very pigeonholed and it's always sort of one way, yeah. one dimensional. So this initiative is really pushing um, and showing how multifaceted, how talented um, and how bright and just phenomenal um, these men are. And they're all around us. You know, um, you know, some of the men in the program that we're featuring um, some are famous, some are widely known, and some are not, but they're all doing these things that are, I mean, it's it's mind-blowing. Um, do you think, um, and when you say that, do you think, and we all do this probably, and our parents did this to us at some point, uh, and focused on how much money you was going to be making. Right, and it, and it was intentionally done to focus on, <clears throat> excuse me, to showcase people who may or may not have a lot in the bank, and some people we don't know, but um, the common thread was purposefully made so that you can focus on their works and what they're doing and the caliber of these men, despite you know what they may or may not have in their bank accounts. Right, but do you think socially, I mean, and, and let's speak specifically about black and Spanish people, right? Because mm-hmm. we both groups do it, and we're cousins in it. Right. We focus on... How much money you got, though? Right. You, what's that bank account look like? Right. 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 We brag about our material wealth often, right? And so did our parents. Right. right. And so did our parents' parents, right? right? It was about money, and we live in a capitalist society here in America where a lot of it is about money. But as you and I were talking before, uh, off the air before yeah. um, Kelly came in, it was about how long are you going to have money for? Well, Not that right. instant gratification. Well, that's the thing. I mean, one of the, the, the legacies of, and mission of Black Enterprise is to broaden people's perspective about how you can make a really good living. And the truth is, if you're passionate about what you do, if you're really good at what you do, you will make money. You will make money over time, and you will probably make money at the top of your field. And so it's it's really about pursuing... And it, on, oh, the flip side is also true. If you're not passionate about it, engineering may pay the most money, but if you hate engineering, you're not going to excel at it, and you're not going to keep be able to sustain income in it so quality of life. so it's about quality of life it's about how how hard you want to work at it how you feel about what you do and if you're among the best at what you do in any space you're going to make good money in that space now is this a series of workshops seminars what is it um it's really a fully integrated program mm-hmm. so right now we have the website uh, blackenterprise.com slash be modern man um, where you can really see the full gamut of men and their stories as well as you know stories written directly from their perspective um, on very 
various topics um, from, you know, incarceration to fatherhood um, to, you know, tips on, you know, how to be a mogul, etc. cetera. Um, and we also have a full integration within all of our events. We have um, GNT, our golf and tennis challenge coming up. Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend mm-hmm. in Florida. Um, so, you know, we have a, a, a BE Modern Man component in there. Um, as well as our broadcast and I mean our our publication obviously um, the core of our business so um, you know it's fully encompassed in everything um, that we do because we want to ensure that we take control of the narrative that belongs to us Um, and so you know Black Enterprise Butch and everyone else has been doing you know a great job in making sure that we're taking ownership and pushing um, this initiative, which um, really is a global movement. I mean, yeah, hashtag BE Modern Man absolutely. has really been catching fire across, especially Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Probably some other stuff Kelly knows that I don't know. But <laughs> but uh, if you hashtag BE Modern Man, you'll get brought up to speed on all the different people who are involved in the profiles. And we'll set, share the link for how you can nominate yourself or people that you know that you think should be considered for the and that's what this is, and that's what this is about back to what you were saying was taking control right, right. but do you also feel um in in some ways because i the the tone of it feels like we also need to take responsibility for some of the images we are right. promoting of ourselves right because yeah, absolutely. you know uh, right now our activity on twitter is being well documented mm-hmm. right black activity on social media is a is People are doing analytics on it right now. It's a barometer. Major brands are really looking, especially with what BET did the other night and their level of activity yeah. and impressions and how they, you know, had of the top 10 things trending, whether I think it was around the world or even in the country. Mm-hmm. It was nine or eight of them were about BET. And so that's being watched by major businesses, right? right? So that shows you that when we want to control the conversation around ourselves, we can However, conversely, we still allow Monday through Friday, it feels like often, the headlines and most of the blogs are driven by things that aren't images that we enjoy seeing of ourselves. Um, do you feel like we have to take some onus on, on that for ourselves and take control of that as well? The, the people involved in media, the bloggers and all of that. Absolutely. I mean, we I mean, you said it yourself. We have the control. Um, so it's about acknowledging that and actually taking initiative to do that. Um, you know, it's a responsibility to want to write about, you know, there's a way that you can talk about something and it can be in a, a negative light. But if you take the initiative to say, you know, we're going to talk about this in an honest way. And still be positive about it mm-hmm. so that, you know, people don't read it and, you know, leave with disparaging thoughts or hopeless or, um, you know, with a negative impression on our people. Um, there's ways to do that and talk about things. You don't have to bar away from, you know, things that are controversial or um, that may be a taboo topic. Talk about it. I mean, that's what it is. It's dialogue, but it's dialogue where we don't have to beat ourselves up. And we are the owners of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Our founder, Earl Graves Sr., um, had a term for it when um, over the years of him um, founding and running Black Enterprise. He called it solution-oriented media, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. meaning you can talk about anything you want, but talk about it with the idea that you're going to present solutions and, and, and a way out and a way up, not just, oh, things are so horrible. Right. And whether you're talking about something positive or something negative, the idea is to be solution-oriented. And BE Modern Man is, is kind of a 21st century expression of this idea of solution-oriented media as it relates to how black men are, are portrayed and, and the voices that we have. Now, we had a young man just come in here. I have your, your paper here. Introduce you. Walk, walk over in between Kelly and uh, Alfred for me um, because uh, we wanted to highlight you today, or they did. You're founder of Insta Sneaks, right? Speak right into the mic. Yeah, uh, my name is Emeka and then uh, the founder of a mobile app available on iOS called Insta Sneaks. And did you heard of this one? Yeah, I heard of it. Can you just tell us a little bit more about it? Because I, I, I've actually heard a couple of my friends talk about it. Okay, that's that's good news. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something's going right. Um, so, uh, pretty much, the pain point that we were looking to solve was, you know, growing up as a part of the community and culture that, you know, you see these massive lines outside of sneaker stores or, right. or you know, every Saturday morning down in Soho or wherever, and uh, you have you know people you know. Or us really in uh, suffering from like the whole supply and demand uh, dynamic with you know wanting to get these newest releases or or wanting to you know have access to X Y and Z and and then on the other end there's obviously you know people that um, there's, there's a reason why these things work the way they do right there's an obvious economic incentive for uh, the Nike or the Adidas of the yeah, world yeah. to control the supply and so you know 
my brother and I were about three three years apart, and so I noticed that he was having the same issues that I was having when I was his age. And then I realized that you know this is a thing that's very intentional. And so you know we decided to you know kind of put our heads together and and leverage our resources and and, and, and backgrounds to just figure out what we could do to address the issue. And so Instastinks is a platform that. Um, it, it kind of balances out that supply dilemma by, by centralizing the sneaker and streetwear community. So if you're looking for a shoe, or instead of maybe waiting in line all night or whatever, you can know that there's a platform that has a very high probability of having that shoe just because the community is uh, central, centralized there. And, and basically what you're saying, if I live in New York City and they have limited supply in New York City, I know somebody in San Francisco might have something yeah. for me, or in Boise, Idaho, or, or in know, Austin, keep, Texas, or wherever. Absolutely, even in China. Like, people are finding us in China and right. things like that. And so uh, you just increase your likelihood by going to a centralized right. uh, place. And then more than that, it's bringing the entire ecosystem together. Well, also, you know, this is interesting because because now a lot of children, a lot of teenagers actually are getting in a lot of trouble waiting in lines. It's actually becoming dangerous <laughs> It's now. very dangerous, yeah. It's like, by I've, the way, guys, it was always dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> when I was coming up, you was getting robbed for your joints. Well, yeah, but I feel like now it's even worse. It's worse. Yeah. I feel like it's wor- it's yeah. more than ever. Ebro, I was one of those well, kids that was waiting in line. Well, because they're beating up kids in the line and cutting lines, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah but it's more of people that have been waiting in line for maybe days right. are getting assaulted. Yeah. That's what I mean. They get like, beat up. Stabbed, and yeah. it gets, it's, it's even worse now. I mean, I remember people getting jumped, but like, I mean, killed. I remember kids getting shot for Jordans. That's it incredible. was a thing. Yeah. You would get shot in the street for your Jordans. Run those like right now. And it now. just doesn't have to be like that. You right. know, it shouldn't have to be like that. You know, you look at the tools, the technology that's available, and so we shouldn't be putting ourselves or each other at risk in that way. It's very interesting, though, because I, I know how the, the sneaker circles work. <laughs> how do you get these releases available to your app? Because there's yeah. certain things like like the Supreme, whatever, yep. dunks yeah. or whatever, they're only available in New York City. Exactly, yeah. So the fact that you're able to get your hands on some available on the app is incredible. Yeah, and so it's been a lot of, obviously, relationship building. Of so, so we work with um, a lot of boutiques, and then there are, you know, power sellers who have their own one-on-one connects. And so we don't want to, like, overlap with anybody's, you know, you know intimate connection or right, their, the, right. the, the plug or whatever. <laughs> um, but we do want to, you know, give them a larger audience. So it's just about building those relationships and then, you know, giving them a larger platform to do their thing on. I think it's awesome. Insta Sneaks, yeah. uh, BE Modern Man, Black Enterprise Modern. Are, is this your, is this the first candidate? Is this the first guy that you guys have highlighted no, or no. in this particular process? <laughs> he's, he, he's one of a hundred men that we started men. out with. Yeah. 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 And you get to come on the radio. <laughs> 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 Which one of y'all collect sneakers? Somebody's collecting sneakers. Well, you I know, know like I grab the mic, Kelly. Grab <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a businesswoman. <laughs> 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 Kelly's like, listen, I, like I, look, 10 I know now. the demographic here, so I'm like, you know what, Emeka? You, <laughs> you need fit. to come on. Insta Sneaks. It's a, now, this is an app you can download, you can download right, right to your right phone. Now. And basically, am I bidding on sneakers? Am I buying sneakers from other people? You're, Where am I? How is this working? You're buying sneakers from other people. If you're a designer, you're creating your design and launching them to our platform of over 250,000 people. Um, so you, you're, you're buying directly from other peers and then you're, you're you know, putting your product out there to see what the interest is. Do you guys do like consignment also or um, resale? So, so we're, we're not doing consignment yet. Mm-hmm. That is something that we've thought about. Um, but, but right now we do uh, peer-to-peer. So just trying to minimize the, the wait time because that's something we saw people hate yeah. that middleman process. And make it safer. Yeah. yeah. Because it's getting crazy out here. Yeah. Uh, Black Enterprise, Modern Man, you can go... You shook your head, Kelly. Did I do it wrong? Blackenterprise.com slash BE Modern Man. Yes, there you go. Um, <laughs> and, and you can nominate. This Absolutely. is this is so we can highlight and control the narrative around yep. young black men doing things um, that aren't being highlighted every Absolutely. day. Um, any other outside of sneakers? Are they, it run <laughs> run through like I'm sure in that hundred list. Oh, there's man. a couple of things that popped to your mind that you thought people. were. I mean, these are some. Go step up to the mic. Fix your mic, uh, Laura Styles. Can you hear me? Um, these are some incredible people. I'm talking about um, uh, uh, the names. Well, are. I know I put fashion you on the spot. designers, yes. um, fashion designers, technology um, gurus, uh, investment bankers, investment bankers, wow. community um, leaders, uh, architects, uh, NASA um, uh, engineers, 
I'm I'm talking about like and so gamut. let's say I'm let's say I'm a high school student, yeah. uh, college student. I'm trying to figure out my path, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do when I log on to blackenterprise.com slash be modern man, mm-hmm. can I connect with these individuals in some way? Is there some way for me to reach out to them, get an internship? Like I'm trying to, you know, because I'm trying to think yeah. if I'm a young person, I'm seeing this. This is awesome for me. Now I can meet people who look like me, Absolutely. maybe come from the background I come from, but are starting to see some success in their in their dreams and follow their path. Can I I reach these people. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, one of the components, and we talked about social media earlier, is we're also selecting people who are very engaged social media wise, and who are so that when you see them on the Be Modern Man platform, these are people who are very, very accessible. They're very, very passionate about influencing others, including young black men. And um, and in fact, they've done maybe more than we have formally to really push the word out and to showcase who they are. Because the idea is to, the challenge that we that we face in in twenty first century, just you know, in general, is that most of the best opportunities aren't the kinds you can see with your own eyes. Right. You know, back when I mean, I'm older than all of y'all, so you know, you say I want to be a doctor, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a fireman, but a lot of the best business and, and career opportunities aren't the kinds of things you can see with your own eyes unless you see somebody who's already doing it. Right. And and so a big part of that is most of the men, um, I would say ninety. Nine percent of the men who are involved are like, no, we want people to know what we're doing, and we're accessible to other people. So we can Is there? Um, and I get this a lot because it's very mm-hmm. popular now. People want to be in a blog. They want to mm-hmm. do a podcast. Everybody wants to. And I'm. And I often will tell people, there's so many other jobs around right. here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was fortunate. I started doing this when I was 15 years old. So making little to no money for a significant period of time wasn't a big deal for me, right? Because I didn't, I hadn't graduated from college yet and I never ended up graduating from college. I ended up dropping out because I got a salary to do this (laughs) and I went on my path, right? (laughs) But I could put, I put in five to six years of work for little to no money and it wasn't a big deal because I was a teenager, right? But now if I was 24, and I tried to get in and start blogging or get in the media. The amount of time, and Laura, you can speak to this. How much time yeah. did you put in making little to no money to do Oh my this? God, like seven, eight years behind the scenes, yeah. making nothing. I had like four jobs just because I was really passionate about this yeah. this particular career. But you yeah. just hit that word passion again. Right. I mean, every, every area of endeavor, there's gonna be this kind of almost, I call it an apprentice period, yeah. a three mm-hmm. to five to eight right. year apprentice period. I mean, he didn't just roll out of bed <laughs> and, and dream up this app. There was a lot of work and time How and much investment. time? How much time? So, uh, there was a lot of research. So, I mean, two years of research um, while I was working in a, a full-time corporate gig, mm-hmm. um, just trying to make sure that what we did was very intentional, right? right. So a lot of people, to your, to your point, just you know see it and think it's something you can just wake up and do the next day and although we do want to inspire and motivate people to to be as ambitious as possible i think a lot of it is about having appropriate expectations in in terms of how you approach these how many people shit on your dream how many people when you were like i'm going to do this directly to your face that is never going to work well, they didn't do it to my face. <laughs> they didn't do it to my face. Yes. Um, so, I, so I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the nature of it. And I, and I think a lot of it's in, in presentation, right? right? So I didn't show up like you know, I didn't try to call you know Phil Knight or, or, or Tinker at Nike and say, hey guys, let's let's do this tomorrow, because I would have been laughed at, right? right? So, so I think that a lot of it's in presentation and in the preparation, so that when you do show up. You know, with something that's that's tangible, live, and shows that you've done the homework, people take you a lot. How much of your own money did you invest uh, from your job? All of my own money. All of (laughs) my own money. I mean, you know, I was working several years in a corporate consulting or management consulting background, and you know, this is something that you know I believed in. I thought that we could execute against. So you know, I went to all. And this is your primary source of income. This is everything for you now. And and we've grown a team. We have a team of about six now, and we're still growing. And uh, probably all of you can speak to this too, because I know a lot of young business business owners um, that I know get so emotionally tied to a brand or a business that they built. When in America, the game is to build something that people want to buy from you and you get a nice big payout. Not for everyone. Some people want to Some people want to mm-hmm. keep their business. Yeah. Do you ever plan on selling Insta Sneaks? Uh, that's not the plan now. Not You're going to keep it. It's not. The, I mean, it's not the plan now. So, I mean, <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> so, so, I mean, uh, I can't speak to the future, but I do know that we we started with a, with a goal in mind in terms of a, a problem that we're trying to solve. And we're not there yet. So we're still building and still doing that. So I wouldn't be comfortable leaving this and, until I thought that we had, you know, solved that pain point because we're thinking about the community we're trying to create for. 
That's dope. Good for you. Uh, any modern men out there, or maybe you know a modern man, and you. Be e modern. Mm-hmm. Kelly is on me about the brand. <laughs> right. Very important that you grab the, them grab in the this right mic, Kelly. <laughs> grab this mic. <laughs> It's, you do it. You do it. I don't want to screw it up anymore. No, I'm tired listen, of getting yelled it's, at. It's, <laughs> it's BE Modern Man. So yes. as we said before, you can log on to blackenterprise.com slash BE Modern Man. Um, hashtag BE Modern Man. You can go. You can nominate um, you, can, you can nominate your own BE Modern Man. You can read about the stories of these men. Um, you can connect with us uh, via at blackenterprise.com. You can come to our events um, where you can meet some of these yes. men. The next one being GNT yeah, in the Florida. The Black Enterprise Golf and Tennis Challenge is going to be a, a our next major showcase Ooh. would be Modern Man down at um, Listen. Palm Be- PGA National Resort <laughs> in Palm Beach yeah, Gardens, nice. Florida. It's nice. the bomb. Nice. And uh, it's uh, just uh, socializing, networking, music at night. It's going to be amazing. Com- competitive. I mean, it's a great event, and it'll be a great showcase for BE Modern. It's probably the best of our events to showcase Absolutely. BE Absolutely. And we actually have a code. Um, if you log on to blackenterprise.com slash events, you can use the code BEMM, as in BE Modern Man, um, for a special discount. Um, so it's it's going to be amazing. But mm-hmm. follow the story, the stories. Um, follow the hashtags. Interact. Uh, reach out. Um, you know, there are so many stories that, I mean, it's, this is a beast. Um, the stories that are coming, it's, we can read them all day and, you know, we have a lot of things in store, um, for this initiative. As I said before, this is a global movement, so it doesn't stop here. Now, this um, 100 men is the first one. This is the first is 100, 100 men. So we're still looking for nominees because there's a lot of great stories. To tell. And so is, are you listing this first 100 and then you'll start again? How does it work or does the list grow beyond 100? What? Cause I haven't logged on and looked, so I have to be honest i'm not quite i'm, I'm trying to envision what i'm going to see when i get there we have the 100 men um you know this program it launched officially officially launched last month may 11th um and it's grown tremendously so if you go on there we have the 100 men which we are still in the midst of sort of revealing um we dropped 10 new men um at the top of every week and then we also have stories uh be modern man spotlights where we focus on um you know particular stories or businesses um we also have our perspective which are um stories directly from these men on various topics um what else do we have? I mean, it's it runs the gamut, and we have a lot of things queued up in stores, inboxes blowing up. Yes. <laughs> Which is a good thing. But it's a it's a it's a great thing because it shows that it's such a necessity. We have some great partners on board that you know are looking to really move this thing. I mean, they're everyone's so enthusiastic about it um, because this is. Um, really the hub of sort of what everyone has been waiting for. Yeah. So um, it's it's great that, you know, we at Black Enterprise really get to push this and um, really launch this and really push it to the best and to what it's going to be. I mean, what it already is, quite honestly. So um, we're excited, man. And it's, it's about getting these stories out. I, it, I mean, it's... And so to take it back when we first had we had a little photo shoot with uh, 13 of our ambassadors um i believe it was early may or i just know i missed it listen <laughs> that's your vote <laughs> I, had, I was out of town listen, he's at large he you wanna, know he's at large he wanna make plans, man. Man. i was really like <laughs> that <laughs> you know he got stuff to do he's at large man. so um, this was for the first the first 10 you said. yeah this was for the okay. first 10 first 13 and some of these men you know they flew out some flew out from cali California, some yeah. flew out from texas like it was just they were just Annie up to like you know be a part of it and some of these men met for the first time and just sitting them watching them calling each other kings like dapping it up yeah like it was such a magical moment and you know when I think of you know people like my brother I have a 24 year old brother um you know him seeing things like this or like my nephews or like my you know what I mean yeah. like the impact of just watching something like that happen um you know, it really just left me speechless. So um, it's it's really um, enchanting to really sort of see this thing progress and everyone's so enthusiastic and really just want to be a part of it because it's time. They actually did a great video um, that captures yeah. some of that magic. We just showed it at the African American Festival in Baltimore. Standing and, ovations. And the Entrepreneur That's Summit dope. in Atlanta. And uh, yeah, it does, that, that was from that gathering of those ambassadors. It was amazing. Passion. Uh, follow through it sounds like purpose purpose mm-hmm. uh, and just willing to connect with the right people it sounds like is going to be uh, some of the things that young people need to learn and can learn from this uh, black enterprise modern man B.E. modern you, man yeah. I didn't want to yeah. they, they, can, they can learn it and they can be it yeah. As, and yeah. they they are it that's right Alfred before I let you go um, you've been with black enterprise magazine how long 
I'm in my 29th year. Ooh. 29 years. Yeah. Um, in your years in working in magazine, print media, and just studying and seeing black business in America, mm -hmm. right? Where would you say we are today in the trajectory of the black economy, black business, and just how much uh, new business is being developed? Well, black women in particular are the fastest um, um, segment of entrepreneurial growth in sheer numbers. Mm. Um, black business in general, after a major setback after this, this last recession, um, right. that, that set black business back heavily in particular. But I would say over the last five years, it's rebounded. Um, the nation's largest black-owned businesses, I think, did over, more, over $21 billion last year, which it had dropped back during the recession. So we're headed in a positive direction. Um, but I'm most excited about not the largest black-owned businesses, but businesses like InstaSneaks and right. a lot of the new innovators the new, yeah. that I think when we look up in, um, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, um, we're going to, right now, the billion dollar black owned business is still m maybe about 10 businesses I've ever gotten there. I think in the next 10 years, you'll have easily 100 businesses. And a lot of it is technology based because of the tools. The yep. tools now and technology Ooh. knock down all the barriers. Well, like technology, logistics. Yeah. So the fact that you can, I mean, he talked about customers and, yes. and clients who are in China. Those physical geographic barriers are falling, and, right. and the next generation of black entrepreneurs is in position to, to benefit from that. And what would you like to see from them? You, somebody who's been in this business 29 years, have seen businesses come and go, you've seen uh, the black community change significantly, right? What would you like to see for, the, for these future um, entrepreneurs? For, for me, one of my things I hope to see um, in, in my lifetime is, is a time when the Fortune 500 has uh, at least 13 to 15 percent representation of black and brown um, which CEOs, is mirrors the population which mirrors of, the population yeah. that means we have that's a great barometer for where we should get um we're probably you know there's only been like two or two i think two black businesses that i know of that have ever made the fortune 500 and i think when we get to that point then we, we know we're heading in the right direction and that will have a trickle down I hate that term trickle down, actually. It'll have a broad, a ripple effect <laughs> right. economically right, um, for, everyone. for everyone, both um, here and abroad. People underestimate the degree to which people of color in other countries, in Brazil, mm -hmm. in South Africa, in, in um, West Africa, oh. look to what well, I was people just going to say, do in America are you seeing business, are you seeing young businessmen, women uh, venture out? Because obviously I know a lot of people in Nigeria, South Africa, right. uh, the Caribbean who all, you know, obviously in media and music yes, and yes. entertainment, they reach out to us all the time because Nigeria is a, a major market right now. And a lot yeah, of people not, are not only do they reach out, I mean, obviously we, social media helps with that as well, mm -hmm. but our, our entrepreneur summit that we do every year, which is the largest gathering of black entrepreneurs we just did in Atlanta in May. Every year, some contingent from Ghana or from Great Britain or from Nigeria, they will bring a group of entrepreneurs right. to come because they look at they look to us for inspiration and guidance. Um, there's actually a South African version of Black Enterprise really? um, that, that 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 plays major tribute to what we do by trying to duplicate a lot of that. And are we connecting that? Like, are 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 you spoke of logistics? Are we um, as Black entrepreneurs doing a good job of connecting with? other countries in Africa and taking our businesses there? Is that happening? Are you I, hearing about it? I think today it? in the age of social media, it's as well now. as a lot of other, just the general globalization of business, I think is happening um, a lot more in the last 15 years than it, than in the previous, you know, 50 years. Absolutely. So yeah, it, it's happening. It's happening. I, I, I think soon one day Black Enterprise will have to do a global like we do our BE 100s, nation's largest black owned businesses. I think within the next 10 years, we'll be doing our first be, you know, black owned global businesses. So, Black Enterprise, Alfred's going to need to fly around. He's at large. He's got, I you know, know what I mean? I'm going to be really at large. He's set up, though. You see how he set it up? You see how he set it up? He's like, we got to go global. Whatever I have to do to serve. <laughs> I will take a <laughs> take a bullet for the team. So <laughs> humble. Yeah, well, yeah, that too. Modesty well, is one of my best attributes. I would love I would love to have you guys on more often to talk yeah, about. Let's do um, it. I think up. one of the things, and we may not be able to get to it today because it's very uh, deep conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, because of social media, which we've talked a lot mm -hmm. about, it's enabled us to take to task people who aren't serving our communities correctly, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, discriminating or what's going on in South you know, South Carolina, right? right. A lot of right, businesses right. in that state knew Oof. that if that Confederate flag didn't come down and this wasn't handled right, if you were doing business in South Carolina, people were going to come for you, right? right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, so that, and I believe that that's really why these states acted so fast. Absolutely. Is oh, no. because now they can see us Capitalism. talking and they can see us saying, listen, if you're supporting the economy 
of a state or a place that doesn't support us in the right way, we're not going to support that state or that business. Oh, that's been a big part of Black Enterprise. I told you how much how invested we are in the events business. Right. Our founder has um, turned down venues, states who are trying to get our events uh, because we're like, no, the policies in that state, we're not nah. going to bring millions of dollars to your not state. Doing it. We've also had the positive um, leverage of saying, if we're going to come, we want to make sure a certain percentage of those jobs, when we when we come there, we better see some black and brown faces. Absolutely. Um, so we we we've uh, leveraged that, um, and I think every business and every entrepreneur can do that because you're right. Dollars, you know, people. This don't is America, to, Jack. Don't mess around this with is the what dollars. it is. They're this like, is what it is. You know, we can work something out if it's going to be some dollars. But it's also about acknowledging that power that you have and you hold and harnessing it to yeah. make those movements that you need to make. So. Um, you know, when you know that these businesses are not going to go or going to go somewhere that you are, you need to acknowledge that and understand that you hold the keys to that. Um, so your voice does matter. What you do does matter. What you purchase does matter. So be a little bit more cognizant about yes. where you put your efforts and your money into where you put your businesses and who and what your businesses serve because it matters and it has an impact. And now it's more, more so than ever. It's very evident. And these companies are taking notice. There you go. Black Enterprise, B-E, Modern Man, yeah, blackenterprise.com yeah. slash B-E, Modern Man. If you know a modern man, your father, your uh, uh, your brother, your uncle, whatever, nieces, Cut. sons, or nephews, um, excuse, me. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, excuse uh, me, sons, all of the above. Absolutely. You guys, thanks for having me. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. It was this great was fantastic. talk. fantastic.